I'm sure all of you know about Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, blogging. In fact, most of you probably spend two hours or more a day on social networks. Perhaps some of you rely on this for your business or your entire role exists because of Web2 technology. Have you ever considered, though, that the internet is evolving? I didn't know it at the time, but in 2014, the co-founder of the Ethereum blockchain, Gavin Wood, coined the term Web 3.0 and changed a new shift into existence. Now, most of you probably think of social media as part of your everyday, but this is social currency. In Web 2.0, we are exchanging our content, could be your photos, your ideas, your voice, in exchange for likes, in exchange for time, in exchange for attention. And in Web 3, we're introducing the idea of decentralization and a new form of digital ownership on the blockchain. So for example, rather than having to spend your time trying to skip that annoying video or that ad at the beginning of YouTube, you can instead be rewarded with a cryptocurrency for your attention, a basic attention token. Or you as a photographer, instead of simply throwing up something online, hoping someone's gonna like it, you can mint it as an NFT, get some money for it, and using a digital contract, every time that file transfers to new hands, you get royalties baked in for all of eternity. This term Web3 was coined in 2014, but I don't believe that this cultural impact was really seen until the last couple of years. These terms like NFT, cryptocurrency, blockchain, and now the metaverse have really gone from being a niche subculture and has started entering the mainstream. And I'm not here to talk to you about currency, about money. If any of you have invested in, in anything lately, you're probably not very happy. <laughs> but in fact, I'm here to talk to you about the culture of Web3 and how it can build community. I'm not really a tech guy. I'm fascinated by it. Uh, but my background is in wine. I founded a wine tour company. I'm a professional sommelier, and I now work in events and community management. So I'm a people person. I don't code. I don't like sitting on a screen all day. But I've still been able to take my passions and bring them into the Web3 space. So I'd like you to think, perhaps today, that NFTs, crypto, blockchain, and now the metaverse uh, are just the next step, an update, an evolution of the internet, and that you can leverage these tools as a way to build your community, maybe sell your art or expertise online, or perhaps even reach new fundraising goals. Now, uh, can you, with show of hands, tell me if before today you heard the term NFT? Okay, pretty good, almost everyone. How many of you own an NFT? Whoa, slim pickings. <laughs> That's OK. So maybe you'd be surprised if I told you that because of NFTs, I've managed to attend a global pizza party thrown across 60 countries on the same day. Later, a few months later, uh, hosted a cocktail party on a pink beach in Amsterdam and narrowly missed out on the chance to party on a yacht with the likes of Madonna. Mm -hmm. How do these digital tokens connect us in the physical realm? Well, let me share with you my story. It really wasn't until two years ago that I touched any part of Web3. And the first thing I ever did was bought some Ether on the Ethereum blockchain, a cryptocurrency. I bought a little bit, started watching the markets, got curious, and wanted to know more. And this was during the pandemic, so I had a lot of extra time on my hands. I was on the audio-only chat app called Clubhouse. Uh, it's very much like Twitter spaces, if you've used this. And I started connecting with people in the Web3 space. Uh, originally, I got on there for wine and sharing my, my knowledge on that. But I inevitably kept finding myself in these chat rooms, learning about blockchain. And I went down the rabbit hole. Fast forward a couple of months, and I'm sitting in my living room on a yoga mat at 2 a.m., as one does. 
and I get a group chat on this uh, yeah, a message on a group chat from these Web3 folks that I've started to interact with a lot. And one of them is talking about an NFT project that they think is going to be a quote unquote big deal. Um, and it was on a pre-sale, which you know is apparently uh, difficult to get in on. Now, I had never bought an NFT before. I'm not really a collector, so I didn't see why a randomly generated cartoon ape that looks something uh, like this. I don't know why something like this could be a big deal. Um, but I wanted to learn more, and I decided to ape in and buy one of these NFTs. Now, before we go any further, I do want to touch a teeny tiny bit on what NFTs are, what they can do, and then I'll get back to my exciting stories. Uh, an NFT stands for a non-fungible token, uh, which basically means it's a unique digital token that is on the blockchain. It allows for transparency, and basically I'd think of it like a serial code or like a barcode. And if you have something attached to this, this data, this serial code, you can just verify the ownership. So this could be an image, this could be uh, video, this could be audio. In fact, we have countries right now looking at forms of secure digital ID, uh, potentially selling tickets for the Olympics, or maybe by the time we're all old and happy, uh, we'll be able to put our last will and testament on the blockchain as an NFT. Perhaps. Now, most of the time, NFTs are a form of digital art. And as soon as this collection hit the market, this is called the Bored Ape Yacht Club, uh, it started to get a lot of buzz. Again, I just bought this thing, didn't really know anything about it, and my community starts blowing up. It's on Twitter, people are talking about it, and I start getting offers on OpenSea, which is the largest NFT marketplace online for my ape. Now, again, I don't know, it's an ape. But there's a lot of community involved in this. Immediately, you had access to a special Discord server where you could talk to other owners of the apes. And they built a big community canvas where every one of the 10,000 ape holders got one quadrant that they could design in a communal graffiti wall. So people started talking, meeting, connecting, so that they could feed into this greater community canvas. Meetups started happening in person where you know, people in New York, LA, Shanghai, and so on were apes meeting apes and hanging out. But to be honest, I wasn't overly committed to this community. And when I saw an offer on my ape for 3.2 ether, which was about 12,000 US dollars at the time, I decided to sell my ape, which was pretty great. I made about 50 times my initial investment on this ape. I was like, I'm going to go travel the Silk Road for the summer, do something awesome with this money. But almost immediately, I felt FOMO. All of my friends in this space were raging about the apes, cool things were going on, the prices kept going up, and about a week after I sold my ape, they dropped a NFT uh, partner collection uh, called the Kennel Club, so every ape owner also got a dog. You know, because apes get lonely too, you guys. So it may seem silly, but celebrities started getting involved. Uh, you have Jimmy Fallon, the talk show host, Madonna, who I mentioned before, uh, NBA player Stephen Curry, and the likes of Justin Bieber and Post Malone all became ape holders. And if I sold this today, I could sell it for at least $100,000. Many have sold for two and a half million or more. So. Likely, you understand, I felt a bit awful. <laughs> this is some life-changing money we're talking about here. But I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I just was along for the ride. And so what I really learned from this experience was that there's artwork, and then there's the community. And this is one version or one collection of NFTs. And I thought to myself, well, there must be other NFT collections that are going to have really cool community. Or in fact, maybe I can create my own NFT collection. So with my background in wine, I considered maybe I should make some wine NFTs. So naturally, I made cocktail NFTs. That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> uh, but what happened was I tapped into my community online. Uh, I got the idea that, hey, this cocktail could be almost like 
a brand experience for someone like Google or Apple, where you know, you're getting together at a conference or an event, and you guys could all drink the Google cocktail together. Or maybe you could drink the TED cocktail, which we probably should have talked about before today. But I got in touch uh, with my community, and we did this for a blockchain. And the artists were in Germany, the coders were in San Diego, and I was here in Canada. We all worked together and then met up in Amsterdam to drop these NFTs for a cocktail party on a pink beach, which looked like this. Yeah. So why is it pink? Well, because pink's awesome. Um, but actually, this is the brand color of the blockchain that this was for. And what people had to do was show us that they had the NFT on their phone up at the bar so that they could get drinks all night for fun. Yeah, And they got to have the drink that was on their NFT in real life. So the NFT had pretty fun artwork. They would show this here at the bar. We'd make it for them. And then after this event, this is their digital property. They can keep this. They can show it off. They can do cool things with it. And it's got an attached recipe card as well as an audio file. So you get the instructions of how to make this at home, building up your cocktail collection. So it was really neat. It was very well received. And the, the community kind of cross-pollinated and got excited over this. Uh, to the point where I actually get to do this again in Buenos Aires, and I'll be dropping three more of these recipes very, very soon. Now, a lot of people talk about how it's difficult to get into this space because there's a financial barrier, but there are definitely ways to get involved without spending a single penny, or should I say a sat, short for Satoshi Nakamoto, who's the anonymous founder of Bitcoin. Now that we don't have pennies anymore, we can start talking about sats. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, or at least that's my two sats. <laughs> so this pizza DAO, what is this? Uh, I went to this pizza party thrown across 60 countries uh, on the same day, all done by a group called the Pizza DAO. A DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization which basically means a bunch of people come together over a common idea using direct democracy and use the blockchain to vote and social tokens can be a consensus mechanism. If that's still over your head, uh, that's okay. It's basically like a social voting system uh, that you can manage online. But the pizza DAO, like many things, started with a fun idea. Pizza should be free. And the way they wanted to do this was by celebrating for a global pizza party on Bitcoin Pizza Day. Because believe it or not, the first thing ever bought with a cryptocurrency physically was two Papa John's pizzas on May 22nd. And it was for 10,000 Bitcoin, which would be about 200 million today. <laughs> so they better have been really, really good pizzas. But. So they throw this global pizza party, but they need money. And how do they do that? They use NFTs for fundraising. They consulted with 300 artists and sold a collection of 10,000 pizza boxes, calling it the rare pizzas. And each of these rare pizza NFTs that look something like this were sold on OpenSea so they could throw this party. Um, now, Pretty awesome. After this party, the DAO was like, well, what else can we do? So they started using this money to sponsor pizza parties at different conferences, usually blockchain conferences around the world, which is where I had my first um, experience with the DAO. I went to the ETH Denver conference, and after a day of filling my brain with a bunch of crazy tech information, I went to this after party at a church. You know, that's where you party. So I go out from the outside, it looks like a normal church, get inside, and it's been revamped. There are like pinball machines, arcade, neon lights, crazy signs, and people are having a time swilling around. And I'm talking to a few people, and then in the corner, I see four figures emerge. And they are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? Cowabunga, dude. And they start busting through the room, giving out pizza. I'm like, what is going on? This is like the most fun, crazy thing I've ever done. And uh, I learn after that, it's part of the pizza DAO. This is what they're up to. And I managed to meet a bunch of DAO members there. And then fast forward a few months, they sponsored my Web3 Calgary event here with 45 hot and ready Neapolitan pizzas. 
So as you can see, crypto, blockchain, the metaverse, it doesn't mean you're going to be sitting at home in a quiet corner on your computer. You can actually bring people together in the physical realm using NFTs and Web3. I've talked a little bit about how you can build community as almost a form of community membership, how you can use these for, say, drink ticketing or for events, as well as a way to fundraise for your passion project, even if your passion is pizza. I don't think these are going away. This is all going to evolve, just like the internet is evolving. So I would challenge all of you here today to think, how could you or your organization use these tools to reach your goals and get involved in Web3? Thank you. Thank you.